What's happening guys? We're back and I want to get the steering rack mounted today. Alright, so we got the back half of the chassis pretty well done there last episode. Um, since then I threw a coat of paint on the roll cage. It was starting to rust so I went through and wire brushed it all up and threw a coat of paint on it. So we can leave that for now. Um, the next step is going to be the steering rack. Uh, we have a steering rack out of that, uh, that Mazda Miata. Unfortunately, up in that kind of area that it wants to live, we also need to mount a radiator and an intercooler. Um, but we don't have either one of those right now. Um, I know the radiator that I want to use. It's just a, like a two row Honda Civic style rad. Um, you can pick them up off eBay for fairly cheap uh, and they're fairly universal. So I know the rad that we're going to use, but we can't afford to buy it right now. So instead I went on eBay, got the outer dimensions of it. And we're just going to take that cardboard box there, cut it up and build kind of a mock rad. So we can test fit that in there while we're mounting the steering rack to make sure we don't, you know, have any interference issues. So first thing we're going to do today, make a fake radiator. All right, there's our mock-up radiator. Um, I stuck some, some little outlets on the back, mostly just for looks. Um, so this will fit in here. Um, it's quite a bit smaller than I thought it was gonna be. I thought we were gonna be a little bit tighter for space up there, but uh, that's perfect. That gives us some extra room. So let's uh, grab our steering rack and stick that in there. I think I may have accidentally built my front suspension to the exact same dimensions as a Mazda Miata. Um, this rack, it's like it was built for this car. The, uh, the tie rod ends bolt into the spindles. They should, they're both Mazda parts. But the track width is, is pretty much bang on. We don't have huge amounts of tow out or tow in. Um, there's still some adjustability on those ends so we can account for that a little bit. Um, the rack fits perfect in the chassis. There's lots of room for the radiator. The, uh, the pivot points on the end of the rack even line up with our suspension pivots. So we won't have huge bump steer issues. Um, yeah, this is, this is an ideal situation. We get to reuse everything. We can reuse the stock power steering. Uh, we can reuse, or we are gonna reuse the, the Miata horseshoes. We're gonna mount this thing just like it was mounted in the Miata. Um, we are going to build our mount with a huge amount of adjustability, both up and down and front to back. Um, that way we can, if we got to move the rack uh, back and forth, uh, that'll account for Ackerman and we can move it up and down to cancel out bump steer. So we're golden. 
Um, the only issue I do foresee is steering shaft routing. Um, we might have to notch our chassis a little bit to get around it, but that's pretty minor in the scheme of things. So I'm super pumped about this. Um, the next step is going to be building a mounting plate for it. Uh, but we're going to have to do that tomorrow. I'm out of time for today, so we'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. And we're back. Um, I came out last night and I was looking at, uh, at our steering rack situation. Um, and I realized that in order to mount the steering rack, you kind of have, have to have a good idea where the steering column goes. So I put that in. Um, unfortunately, the steering column runs very close to the, uh, the turbo and the exhaust manifold. So I put that on. Um, it looks like clearance won't be an issue there, so we're good on that front. Uh, so we can basically mount the steering rack wherever we want. Um, there are a couple issues with that. Uh, because the steering rack isn't quite what we want, we have to mount it a little bit high in order to account for our, uh, our suspension pickup points. And because of that, our, uh, our, uh, our steering arms might have to mount to the top of our spindles, but uh, we'll see. So I think the best plan right now is to just mount the rack where it fits the best. And then if we have to modify the spindles later to put heim joints on the top or something, we can do that. So I got some, uh, some of this channel iron. We're gonna run basically a cross member all the way frame rail to frame rail. Uh, I've seen a lot of guys run their mounts front to back. And I don't like that because a lot of the force is actually going to get put on the rack side to side. So we're going to run uh, a cross member all the way across and then we'll weld on a couple of pads to accommodate our, our horseshoes. And then uh, if in the future we have to lift the, the steering rack or move it around or, or tilt it, whatever, we can put some wedges or space blocks underneath these horseshoes and that'll move our rack around how we need it. So. Let's uh, just measure up a chunk of this angle, or channel, and cut her up. So a little bit of a snag here. I cut some of these uh, tabs just at a one inch flat bar, thinking that they would bolt to the bottom of the horseshoes and then we'd weld these onto the, the cross member. Unfortunately, I didn't look. Um, this one here is gonna have to be pedestaled up. The, uh, the housing actually kind of wraps around that mount. So if we just welded a piece of flat bar onto that cross member, the housing would hit the cross member before it tightened down. So I got some, some of that one by one square tubing. We're gonna cut these and shape them into pedestals that our horseshoes will sit on. And that should space us up from the cross member enough that the housing won't hit. Um, it's gonna raise our steering rack up an inch, but I just tack welded that cross member in and we can cut those tacks and move that cross member down right to the bottom if we have to and that'll be able to, to raise and lower our steering rack. So let's build a couple pedestals to replace these little tabs and then bolt them on.
All right, with those pedestals on there, it's raised the steering rack up high enough that now our tie rods are actually at a bit of a, a bit of a down angle at ride height. Um, I don't want that. I want them to be pretty well level at ride height. That'll reduce our bump steer. Um, because our rack isn't the perfect length, uh, it's a little bit long, we're gonna try to get as close as we can to level here to reduce the bump steer here because we are gonna induce a little bit with the, the rack length. So we're gonna drop the whole thing down uh, also, because this is meant to go in a car that's a lot shorter um, from the steering wheel to the rack, uh, the, the pinion, the input pinion, is tilted up quite a bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the whole thing and point that pinion backwards a little bit better. So we'll just break the tacks on the cross member, drop it down, rotate it a little bit, get it in the right spot, and then tack it back together. So two steps forward, one step back. tie rods are, are looking good so I'm pretty happy um, with that in though we can start looking at what we're gonna do for cooling where this uh, where our super duper cardboard rad is gonna fit um, I see two options one we can mount it kind of vertical behind the steering rack and then put an intercooler above it or in front of it um, Above it is going to be kind of top mount style, so we're going to have to vent it above. In front of it is not ideal, but it could work. Um, the other option is we could mount our radiator kind of kind of V-mount style with the bottom of it in front of the steering rack and then run our intercooler above that. Um, that might work. Uh, it's going to kind of depend on what our intercooler looks like. I don't have one yet. Um, I'm having a hell of a time trying to find one that'll fit in our, our fairly narrow space. So before we mount the rad, we're going to have to get the intercooler to see kind of where we can put it. But uh, yeah, so steering box or steering rack is mounted. Um, that's all we're going to have time for this episode. Next week, hopefully we can move, hopefully we can move on to the steering shaft and kind of work out where that's going to live. Um, it's going to be pretty tight with the pedal system, so we're going to have to do a little bit of packaging there, but we can start looking at where the steering shaft is going to go. So in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already hit the like and subscribe button, go check us out on Instagram, left foot first media, and we'll see you next week. I'm out of here.